أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فلا وربك لا يؤمنون حتى يحكموك فيما شجر بينهم ثم لا يجدوا في أنفسهم حرجا مما قضيت ويسلموا تسليما We should have a pause here and ponder over this ayah and search our own hearts keeping this ayah before us do we have that condition or not? It's not the story of the people who have passed. This is a living guidance forever. If we are not ready mentally, psychologically, from the depth of our heart, to accept whatever Muhammad sallallahu has said, we can look to it whether he really said it or not, whether the hadith is authentic or not. What does somebody say that the Prophet had said so and we accept it? No. We shall see whether the, the saying of the Prophet which is being attributed to him is authentic. But if once we, we think that this is authentic, this has been said by Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, now we have to accept it. Not only accept it only practically, but also from the depth of our hearts. If we find some dissatisfaction and dislike, for the decision of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in our hearts, although we have accepted it practically, it shows we don't have the real faith in him. فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتَ وَيُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا Total submission. وَلَوْ أَنَّا كَتَبْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَنِ اقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ And had we made it compulsory for them. Now this is again a litmus test. And let we test ourselves also, weigh ourselves also on this very criterion. Had we made it compulsory, obligatory upon them to slay themselves, to kill themselves. Or we had commanded them to go out from their homes. Now these two things. Kill themselves means going to war. Because whenever you go to war to a battle, you are risking your life. Maybe you come back, maybe you are gone. gone. So what does this mean is the qital. Had we made qital compulsory for them, and had we made hijrah compulsory for them, akhudu min al-fusikum, what does it mean? Hijrah. Because this hijrah was not compulsory for the people of Madina. Madina was Darul Hijra itself. People were coming to Madina. And the people who accepted Islam in Madina, they, they didn't have to make any Hijra. So that is actually concerning the Munafiqeen of Madina. Walau anna katabna alayhim. And they take it also. That the, this going to war was not made compulsory. It was not necessary, compulsory, obligatory for every Muslim. Except for the last, you know, Ghazwatu Tabuk. The battle of the book only. Before that it was all persuasion. Go. Try to get the paradise. Try to get the pleasure of Allah. Go and, and fight for the cause of Allah. But it was not compulsory for everybody. Had we made it compulsory, وَلَوْ أَنَّا كَتَبْنَا عَلَيْهِمَ نِقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ أَوِ اخْرُجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِكُمْ مَا فَعَلُوهُ إِلَّا قَلِيلٌ مِّنْهُمْ These munafiqeen of Madinah would not have complied with our command except only a few among them. Now here also we must judge ourselves. If such a command comes to us, just suppose, are we ready to comply with it? And if they had complied with it, 
if they had acted according to the commands, Lakana khair Allahum wa shadda tasbita, this would have been much better for them and most effective in strengthening their characters. Tasbit, sabat. وَإِذَا اللَّهَ تَيْنَاهُمْ إِلَّا دُلَّا عَجْرًا عَظِيمًا And we would have given them in that case a very big reward. وَلَا هَدَيْنَاهُمْ سِرَاطًا مُسْتَقِيمًا And then we would have guided them to the right path. If had we made it compulsory and had they complied with those compulsions, then all these fruits they could get. But Allah knows that only accepting only a few of them, they will not be able to comply with it. Because this is the basis of their nifaq. They are not going to pledge themselves and all what belongs to them, wholly and solely for Allah and His Messenger and His Deen. That is actual nifaq. Now the last ayah in this respect. Very important, very beautiful. وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ you know, there was, a, uh, uh, there was a mode of warning and now persuasion. Both things go side by side. Targheeb and Tarheeb. Warning on the one side, if you don't do it, well, this is the result. And also persuasion. If you do it, that will be the reward. So now the ayah of persuasion. وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهُ وَالرَّسُولُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ عَنَعْمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا ذَٰلِكَ الْفَضْلُ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ عَلِيمًا Whosoever obeys Allah and the Messenger of Allah, he will have the company of those on whom Allah has bestowed his favors. Who are they? The Anbiya, al nabiyin the Siddiqeen, the Shuhada, and the Salihin. We know who is a Nabi. We know who is a Salih. Baseline is Salihin. Topmost position, Anbiya. Now what are these two intervening conditions and states or levels or degrees? Who is the Siddiq? A person who has the purest nature and sound intellect and understanding. So that when the Dawa towards Deen is placed before him, he jumps at it, accepts it instantaneously, without any hesitation, because he himself was pure of heart. His nature was pure. His intellect was sound. They can keep before us the example of Abu Bakr and Siddiq, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. The Prophet himself says, Before whomsoever I placed my da'wah, he hesitated, all them hesitated, for short or long period, except Abu Bakr. He never hesitated even a moment. Siddiq, the true one, and he, does, and he goes forward for tasdeeq. And who are the shohada? Their intellect might not be so high. Their nature might have been somewhat polluted. But they are active people, very active, strong. They work. And in the modern psychological terms, you may call them the extroverts. The introverts and extroverts. They are the extroverts. They are always busy. They are talking, they are fighting, oh so on. These people take some time to understand the da'wah of deen. It took Umar radiallahu ta'ala six years. It took Hazrat Hamza six years. Hamza, so close to Muhammad. Real uncle. So many relations. A friend from the very early childhood. They were brothers in suckling also. Razai brothers. But he waited. He never thought about what, what, what my, this nephew is saying. What is he saying? He always used to go out hunting. So he was not very much attentive to what Muhammad was saying. 
Otherwise, there was no enmity in his heart towards Muhammad sallallahu But these people, when they embrace Islam, they come to the forefront. When Omar embraced Islam, then the Muslims, they had the courage to pray in the courtyard of Kaaba openly. So these are two categories. So in practical work, in the practical assistance to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the shohada become more important. But you know, people who jump at that dawa to accept it without any hesitation, they are the siddiqeen. And these are the shohada. And shohada doesn't mean only the person who dies in the way of Allah. All anbiya are shaheed. All the Rasuls are Shaheed. Shaheedan alaykum. Actually, this Shaheed has a different connotation in the Quranic context. In our general usage, Shaheed means one who has been killed in the way of Allah, who has laid down his life fighting for the cause of Allah. But in Quranic context, Shaheed means something else. We are all Shahada alillah. Ya ayyuhaladzina amanu kunu qawwameena bil qist shuhada lillah. You must become witnesses unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this shaheed witness, they become witnesses to our humanity and mankind. So now these are the four grades, salihin, shuhada, siddiqeen and anbiya. You will have the company and how best this company is. وَحَسُنَ أُولَائِكَ رَفِيقًا Very beautiful, very exalted company, whosoever has this company, and this is, this is persuasion. But what are the conditions to have this company? You can join this party, but how? مَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ The same thing, أَطِعُ اللَّهَ وَأَطِعُ الرَّسُولِ So this is the last ayah on this subject. And most profound. وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ فَأُولَائِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ عَنَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُلَ أُولَائِكَ رَفِيقًا ذَلِكَ الْفَضْلُ بِنَ اللَّهِ And whosoever attains this position, on him it is the grace of Allah. You can have this only through the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa kafa billahi alima, and Allah is sufficient in knowledge. He knows who is worthy of this grace. Allah, you know, doesn't give this grace to everybody. He knows who is worthy of it. Now the second issue, and that is tital fi sabirillah. Because this had become something very big problem for the, for the munafiqeen to risk their lives. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا خُذُوا هِذْرَكُمْ فَانْفِرُوا سُبَاطٍ أَوْ انْفِرُوا جَمِيعًا O who believe, O you who believe, take all the precautionary methods, precautionary steps, hizr, precaution, saving yourself. Don't put yourself into, into your dangers. Up till whatever you can do, you must take all the precautions. Then you can go for the cause of Allah. Fanziru Subatin, either in the form of detachments and small groups, Avin Firu Jamia, or as a whole formation, as an army. These are the two forms of warfare. Gorilla war, small groups going, just as the Prophet just after Hijra, he sent small groups to Nakhla, to the place near Badr, and so on. And an army moving, full formation. Fanfiru Sobatin, Avin Firu Jamiya. You have to now go out to go, go out to war for the cause of Allah. Wainna minkum lamalla yubatian. And verily there are amongst you who will just lag behind, linger behind. Well, I'm still making preparations. I I'll leave, yes. I will also go. But you know, I have to arrange for certain matters. He delays, lingers behind. Fine asabatkum musibatun. Now, if something unpleasant befalls you, supposing the Prophet was sending a small group or an army, an expedition, and you were also assigned to go with them, 
You said, I am not yet ready. I am just arranging for my, you know, conveyance and so on. And the detachment or the, the army has left. Now, if to this army something bad, something unpleasant, some bad incident takes place, قَالَ قَدْ عَنَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيَّ إِذْ لَمْ أَكُمْ مَعَهُمْ شَهِيدًا He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had much mercy upon me and His grace that I was not with them. Had I also been with them, I would have met the same, met the same fate. So, I thank Allah. He has been very merciful, very kind to me. قَدْ عَنَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيَّ إِذْ لَمْ أَكُمْ مَعَهُمْ شَهِيدًا وَلَئِنْ أَسَابَكُمْ فَضْلٌ مِنَ اللَّهِ and if you get the grace of Allah, that is, you are victorious, you have returned with booty, much of the ghanima, now he would say, لَا يَقُولَنَّ كَعَلَّمْ تَكُنْ بَيْنَكُمْ وَبَيْنَهُ مَبَدَّةً يَا لَيْتَنِي كُنْتُ مَعَهُمْ Oh, had I been also be with them. يَا لَيْتَنِي كُنْتُ مَعَهُمْ فَأَفُوزُ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا So I would have also have met this success and this grand, you know, achievement. I would have also taken a part in it. And he will say this, قَالْ لَمْ تَكُنْ بَيْنَكُمْ وَبَيْنَهُ مَبَدَّةً As if there was no relationship, no love, no friendship between you and him. Otherwise, if you have a love for those who went in the way of Allah and they have returned victoriously, you should be happy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given grace to my friends, my brothers. They have returned honorably, victorious. If you had any connection with them, any love for them, any brotherly feelings for them, but because these munafiqeen don't have any brotherly feeling, they are not happy over it that these my brothers, they have returned home safe and they have returned with success. He will be saying, alas, would be that I was also with them. So that I should have also got a share in that triumph and success. Fal yuqatil fi sabili Allahi al-lazina jashroon al-hayat al-dunya bil akhirah. Very important ayah. So those of you who have really sold their worldly life for the life of hereafter, this is the essence of iman. You have to sell this worldly life if you want to get the paradise in the hereafter. Those of you, Alladina Yashrun al Hayat al Dunya bil Akhira, Fal Yukatil fi Sabirillah, he must go to war in the way of Allah. Again, it is not fard. It is persuasion. If you have really made that bargain with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you have really sold yourselves, your bodies, your lives, and your belongings and wealth to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the last tara bin al mu'minin al fusawwa wa lahum bianna lahum al jannah. If you really want to enter paradise, then you must go and fight for the cause of Allah. No alternative for you. Fal yuqatil fi sabilillah illa dina yashur al hayat al dunya bil akhirah wa man yuqatil fi sabilillah. And whosoever goes to fight and goes to war. In the way of Allah, فَيَقْتُلْ فَيُقْتَلْ And if he is murdered, he is martyred, he is killed, or يَغْلِبْ Or he is victorious, he overcomes the enemy. In both cases, فَصَوْفَ نُوْتِهِ أَجْرًا عَظِيمًا We shall give him a very big reward. It is immaterial whether you have laid down your life in that battle, or you have come back home safe and sound. If you are Shaheed or you are Ghazi, for the reward it's absolutely equal because you went to the war, you risked your life, you were ready to lay down your life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in both cases, فَصَوْفَ نُوْتِهِ عَجْرًا عَصِيبًا وَمَا لَكُمْ لَا تُقَاتِلُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Now this وَمَا لَكُمْ This mode of expression is which you call searching question. Penetrating eyes, you know. You ask somebody a question, and that is really not a question. It's a searching question. With penetrating eyes, you ask him. What has happened to you, O Muslims? What is the matter with you? You don't go to war for the cause of Allah, in the way of Allah. 
والمصلافین and for those who are oppressed people muslims in makkah being oppressed persecuted and still you don't want to go to war against the the quraish of makkah wama lakum la tuqatiluna fi sabil allah wal mustadafina min al rijal wal nisa wal wildan those oppressed people among them are men and women and children alladhina yaqulun who are saying and praying to allah rabbana akhrijna min hadhihi al qaryah o our lord take us away take us out from this city from this town az zalim ahluha whose people are oppressors evil doers waj'al lana min ladunka waliyan and appoint from your own personal bounty min ladunka from your own personal bounty appoint appoint for us waliyan a protector waj'al lana min ladunka nasira and appoint for us some helper from your own personal bounty now those men and women and children are crying and praying to allah subhanahu wa taala and you want to sit back in your homes and then you say you are muslims you are mu'mins how come what a contradiction alladhina amanu yuqatiluna fi sabilillah those who have real belief who have come to believe really yuqatiluna fi sabilillah they are fighting in the way of allah for the cause of allah walladhina kafaru yuqatiluna fi sabilit taghut and on the other side those who have disbelieved who have rejected the faith who have not accepted iman they are also fighting but they are fighting in the way of taghut now this is the polarization which is you know in this society when islamic dawa real dawa not this dawa which you are making here you know the real dawa as a movement the revolutionary movement the dawa of a revolutionary movement is something else and the dawa of a missionary organization is something else there is a hell of difference between the two the dawa of a communist was something else and the dawa of christian missionaries is something else no comparison no similarity the hell of difference the dawa of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was something else it was revolution oriented to change the system to establish the rule of allah on earth thy kingdom come to establish the kingdom of heaven on earth that was the end before this dawa so actually alladhina amanu yuqatiluna fi sabil allah when this process you know proceeds further gradually this society is broken into two parts polarization you call it on the one hand there will be people who are hizbullah on the other hand on the left side the hizb ash-shaitan this is hizbullah this is hizb ut-taghut now abu jahl was also fighting he also laid down his life if 14 muslims laid down their lives in badr 70 of kuffar laid down their lives they were also fighting but fighting for the cause of taghut you must remember you know the ayah in surah al-baqarah just after ayatul kursi wa man yakfur bi taghut wa yu'min billah faqad istamsaka bil urwat al-usqa you have to say la ilaha first and then illa allah you have to disbelieve and reject all the taghut and then you have the real belief in allah wa man yakfur bi taghut wa yu'min billah faqad istamsaka bil urwat al-usqa now these are opposing you know parties and groups and armies الذين امنوا يقاتلون في سبيل الله والذين كفروا يقاتلون في سبيل الطاغوت فقاتلوا اولياء الشيطان او مسلم اف يو ار اولياء الله الا ان اولياء الله لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون ايذر يو ار اولياء اف الله اور يو ار اولياء اف شيطان ايذر يو بيلونج تو حزب الله اور يو بيلونج تو حزب الشيطان ايذر يو هاف تو فايت فور دي كوز اف الله اور يو هاف تو فايت فور دي كوز اف طاغوت no middle sex in between either to this side or to that side only two but this polarization only takes place at later period in the beginning there's a mixture but you know as the dawa as the movement 
as the revolutionary process proceeds, the polarization, you know, that also continues. And now two distinct groups come face to face. Inna qaeda shaitani kaana dhaifa. Inna qaeda shaitani kaana dhaifa. Qaed means the designs of shaitan, the plot of shaitan, the strategy of shaitan. It's very weak. It appears to be very strong. But actually, all his designs, all his plannings, all his plots, all his intentions are very weak. Only Allah is testing the true believers, whether they come up to it or not. Alam tara ila ladina qila lahum kufu ediyakum. Have you not considered the case of those of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? To whom it was said, kufu ediyakum, hold back your hands. You know what was the order of the day for 12 long years at Mecca? No retaliation. Passive resistance. Stick to your position. No going back. But no retaliation. No revenge. Take all the persecution with patience. Hazrat Sumayya radiyallahu ta'ala anha, Hazrat Yasir radiyallahu ta'ala, persecuted badly, tortured. But the Prophet used to pass and say, Isbiru ya ala Yasir, fa'inna ba'i lakum al-jannah. Have patience. Your place of promise is Jannah. You are being awaited there. You have to go there. So that was the order of the day. But here's a very big question. Who said so? Kufu adiyakum. We don't find these words in any Makki surah. Now there are only two possibilities. Either it was really the command of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Or it was wahiyya khafi to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It might have been his own judgment, his own ishtihad, his own opinion which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't contradict. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had ordered him in wahiyya khafi. Not in wahiyya jali, we don't find it in Quran, in the animaki surah, kufu aliyakum. These words are appearing only here in this madani surah, surah al-nisa. But it was said before. Who said it? Definitely Muhammad said it. But whether he said it on his own or it was a command through that another wahi, wahiyya ghair matlu. Wahi a khafi, which is not included in the Quran. Both possibilities are there. Alam tara ila lazina qila lahum kuffu adiyakum wa aqimu salata wa atu zakah. Go on establishing prayer and paying the the necessary charity and alms. Falamma kutiba alayhim al-qital. And now, when this qital has been ordained upon them, Before, they used to say, we should be allowed to fight for the cause of Allah. Now, but the, the divine, you know, commandment, either through Muhammad or from Muhammad sallallahu initially, was no, hold back, no retaliation, no fighting. But now, conditions have changed. فَلَمَّا كُتِبَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْقِتَالِ Now it has been ordained and prescribed for them. إِذَا فَرِيقٌ مِّنْهُمْ يَخْشَوْنَ النَّاسَ كَخَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ Now a party, a group among them, they are fearing people as they thought they should have feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ashadda khashiyya or more fear of Allah than the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are fearing these kuffars and these armies and these Quraysh and so on, the enemies. They should have feared Allah, not these enemies of Allah. وَقَالُوا And they were saying, saying, they said, رَبَّنَا لِمَا كَتَبْتَ عَلَيْنَ الْقِتَالِ O our Lord, why have you prescribed this going to war for your cause? لَوْ لَا أَخْرْتَنَا إِلَىٰ جَلِمْ قَرِيبٍ Why didn't you give us more respite? You would have deferred it, delayed it a little more. لَوْ لَا أَخْرْتَنَا إِلَىٰ جَلِمْ قَرِيبٍ قُلْ مَتَاعُ الدُّنْيَا قَلِيبٍ Tell them, all these provisions of this worldly life are very small, trivial. You want to live more? 
How many years do you want more? And what will you be getting here? Why, you know, with Allah, the paradise. قُلْ مَتَعُوا الدُّنْيَا قَلِيلٌ وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لِمَنِ اتَّقَى Why, الْآخِرَة, the hereafter, is much better. But for whom? For the persons who have real taqwa, who have saved themselves from the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who have saved themselves from the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what they are going to get in the akhirah, what is, if you compare to this dunya, what is it? Nothing. وَمَنْ حَيَاتُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَعُوا الْغُرُورِ And Iqbal says very beautifully, کیا ہے تو نے مطاعِ غرور کا سودا You have accepted مطاعِ غرور This is all you know All deceit وَمَلْ حَيَاتُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَعُوا الْغُرُورِ وَلَا تُزْلَمُونَ فَقِيلًا And you will not be wronged On the day of judgment In the hereafter فَقِيل I explained last night Either the husk very, you know, is a very thin membrane round the date stone or a very small thread in the cleft of the date stone. Fatil has two meanings. You know, very trivial. Allah is not going to wrong you a bit. Why don't you want to go to war? You want to live? Don't want to die? But you will have to die. Wherever you will be, yudhrikumul maut. The death will overtake you. Walau kuntum fi burujin mushayyada. Although you might be in the fortified towers, in a fort, all doors closed, all gates guarded, not even a bird can come in, but the death will come in. There can be no barrier. أَنَمَا تَكُونُ يُدْرِكُمُ الْمَوْتِ وَلَوْ كُنْتُمْ فِي بُرُوجٍ مُشَيَّدَةِ وَإِن تُصِبْهُمْ حَسَنَةٌ يَقُولُ هَذَهِ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ Now this is again a very beautiful expression of the psychology of these munafiqeen. إِن تُصِبْهُمْ حَسَنَةٌ If they get something good, some fortunate thing happens, they get victory. What they say? This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's by the grace of Allah. They are big muwahideen. It's from all Allah. وَإِن تُصِبْهُمْ سَيِّرَةٌ And if there is some misfortune which has befell them, something unpleasant has happened, they say, يَقُولُونَ هَذِهِ مِنْ عِنْدِكْ They come and quarrel with the Prophet. This is from you. It was your mistake. You took us out in the battle of Uhud. Well, we were of the opinion that we should defend from within the city, walls of the city of Badina. You took us out. It is all before because of your own strategy, your mistake, your blunder. That was the condition. You know, the basic question was, they were not actually and readily accepting Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If something good has come, oh, it's from Allah. If something, you know, misfortune befall, it is due to you, O oh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Qul kullum min indillah. Tell them everything is from Allah, whether good or bad, whether pleasant or unpleasant. Nothing can befall you without His permission, without His command. Whatever comes, comes from Allah. Ma asaba kam in musibatin illa bi'iznillah. So what has happened to these people? They don't understand anything. Everything is coming from Allah. It's the basic tenet of Iman. So if they profess to believe, they must know these things. Why are they blaming Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Now another way, another mode of expression of the same divine law. مَا سَابَكَ مِنْ حَسَنَةٍ O Muslims, whatever befalls you, whatever is pleasant for you, good for you, from in Allah, it is from Allah. You should say it is from Allah. 
evil befalls you is from your own nafs your mistakes your your own not of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and as for you o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa ma arsalnaka wa arsalnaka lin nas rasula we have sent you only as a messenger wa kafa billahi shahida and allah is sufficient as a witness what you have done he knows it what they are doing he knows it so don't worry You will have to listen these things. ولا تسمعون من الذين أوتوا الكتاب من قبلكم ولا من الذين أشركوا أذن كثيرة. In the very beginning, it was said to Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. وصبر على ما يقولون وهجرهم هجرا جميلا. ولقد نعلم أنك يزيق صدرك ما يقولون. Be very well know that what they are saying is painful, is hurting your heart. But you have to take it with patience. What's bir alama yaqulu na bahjur hum hajan jamila? Because you are the messenger of Allah. As for the decision of the day of judgment, we ourselves are sufficient to be witnesses. We know it. We know what you did, and we know what they are doing. May you tell the Rasul of God that Allah again the same thing. Ita. The soul has to be obeyed. Messenger has to be obeyed totally, unconditionally. May you tell Rasul of God that Allah, whosoever obeys the Prophet, the, the Messenger, actually is obeying Allah. وَمَنْ تَوَلَّى فَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا كَلَيْهِمْ حَفِيزًا And whosoever turns his back to this, to this attitude, he doesn't want to obey Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. So, O oh Muhammad, we have not sent you over them as watchers or keepers. You are not responsible. They will be responsible. They will be held responsible for their own deeds and attitudes. Wa yaqulu na ta, and they say, when in the presence of the Prophet, they say, okay, we accept ta, obedience. We declare our obedience. Faiza barazu min indika, and when they go out from your presence, bayyata ta ifatum min hum ghair al nazi taqul. Now. A group among them is passing their night, saying and planning something contrary to what you said. This is hypocrisy. The double-mindedness, the double-facedness. In your presence, they say, "Ah, we declare our obedience, allegiance." But when they go out, now in the, during the hours of night, they are planning something else. Something to the contrary. غير الذي تقول والله يكتب ما يبيتون. Only they don't know that Allah is writing and recording what they are planning during the night. They are ignoring that Allah knows everything. Far is on whom? Again, ignore them. This is very important. For the second time, far is on whom? Don't engage with them, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. A time will come when Allah subhanahu wa taala will allow you to punish them. Just as at Makkah, be patient, no retaliation. In the same way at Medina, although Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was established, he had men, mu'minin, with him. But you know the hikma, the wisdom, the divine wisdom. Just ignore them. For the time being, don't engage with them. Far is on whom? But Tawakkal Allah. Now there can be, could be the idea if we ignore them, that they are conspiring. They are trying to undo what I am doing. How can I ignore them? But Tawakkal Allah. You have total faith and confidence in Allah. He will rectify whatever wrong they are doing. He will look to these things. You should have your faith and your total dependence and confidence in Allah. Wa kafa billahi wakila. Allah is sufficient as a guardian. He will guard you. They will not be able to do any harm to you. They are only, you know, they are only having fire for them, collecting fire cinders for them for the hereafter. No harm will come to you, but just ignore them. أفلا يتدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عند غير الله لبجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا. Now why this نفاق? 
because they are not pondering over Quran. The only source of true faith, real faith, burning faith, pulsating Iman, burning Iman, thrilling Iman is Quran. As Bawlana Dafar Ali Khan said, وہ جنس نہیں ایمان جسے لے آئیں دکان فلسفہ سے ڈھونڈے سے ملے گی عاقل کو یہ قرآن کے سی پاروں میں پاؤنڈ ڈیپ ان ٹو اس میننگس اینڈ اف یو فیل دا سم تھنگ ود ان یو از آسیلیٹنگ ود دی آسیلیشن آف دی قرآن وائبریٹنگ ود دی سیم فریکوینسیز ایز قرآن دا سمپیتھیٹک وائبریشن وچ یو فیل ود ان یو اٹ ول گیو یو دی کنوکشن دا دی سورس آف مائی سول and the source of this book is the same. My soul and spirit has come from Allah. And this book, this word of Allah has also come from Allah. And that will give you the conviction by your own personal experience. Because conviction can come only through experience. But because we know only the external experience, this is hot, this is cold, this is black, this is white, something within us Our spiritual existence has its own spiritual experience, which Allah Iqbal has described in his lectures. The inner, internal experience. If you feel within you, then you have the total conviction. Are they not pondering over Quran? Had it been from some other source except Allah, You would have found contradictions in it. A book which has been revealed to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam over a period of 22 or 23 years. But this theme is the same. No contradiction. From the very beginning. As you know, if somebody, if he is himself composing, there is a poet or somebody, some prose writer, We always see that the early writings were not so mature. His early poems were not so mature, were not of such high level of literature. But as time progressed, we find, you know, that he could produce better, better poems, better prose. But about Quran, the best came in the very beginning. The Bakki surahs, they are the most profound surahs. Very concise. The most important examples, you know, of liter literary beauty, they are the Makki Suras in the very beginning. So actually, there is no contradiction. This is not written by Muhammad. This is not the composition of Muhammad. وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ غَيْرِ مِنْ إِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِي اخْتِلَافٌ كَسِيرًا وَإِذَا جَاهُمْ أَمْرٌ مِنَ الْأَمْنِ Another attitude of the Munafiqeen. I told you, this is to expose them. To expose them for the Muslims, true moments, so that they should know this internal enemy. This is the fifth columnist, you know, element within your ranks. And an open enemy who is attacking from front is less harmful from this enemy who is attacking you from within your own ranks. So you must know them. To expose them and also to expose them to themselves so that they can have some heart searching. If there is some good in them, that good should prevail over the bad in them so that they should know that this is the attitude and this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very well knows. وَإِذَا جَاهُمْ أَمْرُ مِنَ الْأَمْنِ أَوِ الْخَوْفِ If some news comes to them regarding peace or war, some news has come. They spread it, broadcast it. This is ah, this word is used today for broadcasting, radio broadcasting. This is, you know, the, the, the broadcasting of Gumhuriyatul Muttahida. You know, this is about 20 years or 30 years back. I was very fond of listening to the Cairo radio for the recitation of Quran by Sheikh Abdul Basit or Shaykh Khusri, Raya Muhammadullah. So at 11 o'clock at the night, in the winter, you know, I, my ears were ready to catch the words, Iraatul Gumhuriyatul Muttahidatul Arabiyya Hunal Qahira. 
And then you know the recitation from Tuiza is broadcasted. Anything has come to them regarding peace or war, and it was very important in those days. If somebody has brought a news, well, such and such tribe is pre preparing to attack Medina. Now the right attitude would have been, take this news to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or to other responsible peoples who have been assigned duties, ulul amr, they would infer from it, they would investigate, no, no, not going to them, spreading it, so that people get panicky. وَإِذَا جَاهُمْ أَمْرٌ مِنَ الْأَمْنِ أَبِ الْخَوْفِ أَزَعُوا بِهِ وَلَوْ رَدُّوهُ إِلَى الْرَسُولِ وَإِلَىٰ أُولِ الْأَمْرِ مِنْهُمْ Had they referred this that, that matter to the messenger of Allah, had to people who are holding the reins of power or authority, who are at the helm of affairs, لَا عَلِمَهُ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَنْبِتُونَهُ It would have come to the knowledge of the people who could deduce from it, infer from it, istimbat. To defer, to deduce and infer. وَلَوْلَا فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَتُهُ And if there had not been the grace and mercy of Allah over you, لَتَّبَعَتُمُ الشَّيْطَانَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا You would have followed shaitan and Iblis, except only a few of you. It's the grace of Allah. He's protecting you, O Muslims, from all these menaces, from all these evil designs of these munafiqeen. فَقَاتِلْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Now this is the toughest ayah. On this subject. And the last one also. A Muslim, a true woman, will shiver at listening these words. Fakatil fi sabilillah. Oh Muhammad, you go to war for the cause of Allah. La tukallafu illa nafsak. You will not be held responsible except for your own self. A true moment would have trembled at these words. If nobody else is ready to go out, well, I will go myself. No prophet, you go. You proceed. You don't look to them. Whether they follow you or not. Whether you accompany them, you or not. فَقَاتِلْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ لَا تُكَلَّفُ إِلَّا نفسك. You are responsible for yourself. Now just recall to your mind what happened to Hazrat Musa. It is in Surah Al-Ma'idah. Then there was a command, now go to war. The whole community replied, Fadabanta wa rabbuka faqatil. Now go you and your Lord, make war. Inna hauna qaidun. We are sitting here. Zami jumbad na jumbad gul Muhammad. We are here. We are not going to move. What did Moses say at that time? Alayhi salatu wa salam. Rabbi inni la amliku illa nafsi wa akhi. I don't have any authority except over my own self and this, and my brother Harun, alayhi salatu wa salam. But these terrible words. Fakatil fi sabi lillah. Oh Muhammad, go ahead yourself. La tukallafu illa nafsak. You will not be held responsible except for your own self. وَحَرْضِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And exhort the moments, persuade them. Tahris and tahriz. A very small difference. Harrid. To motivate. To exhort to, for something. Harrid mu'minin, The true moments, they will be moved, inshallah. They will go with you. They will accompany you. أَصَلَ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَكُفَّ بَاسَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Maybe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very soon holds back, controls the strength of these people who are unbelievers. They are waging war now against you, but a time will come. Their energies will be finished and exhausted. So that as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has held them back. أَنْ يَكُفَّ Kufu ediyakum, an yakufa. Allah will hold back their hands from this fighting. Wallahu ashaddu basan wa ashaddu tanqila. And verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the strongest in power and fighting. And He is the strongest in giving punishment. Now, about these munafiqeen, another phenomenon. 
دیز منافقین آف مدینہ اور فرام ایلس ویئر بیکاز اٹ واز اے ٹرائبل سوسائٹی سپوزنگ آئی ایم اے ٹرو مومن اینڈ مائی بردر ہی از اے منافق بٹ ہی از مائی بردر سو وین ایور دیز تھنگز یو نو دے کیم ٹو سرفیس دیٹ دیز منافقین آر ڈوئنگ دس اینڈ دین دیر واز کرٹیسزم اگینسٹ دم اینڈ مے بی سم ایکشن واز تھاٹ ٹو بی ٹیکن اگینسٹ دم دیز پیپل یو نو دی ٹرو مومنس وڈ کم اینڈ سے نو او مسجد رف اللہ ہیو مرسی آن ہم ہی از مائی بردر سو یو جسٹ ایکسکیوز ہم پلیز He is my close relative. He has committed a mistake. I know he is not a munafiq. He, he loves you. It is just by chance that he has committed this mistake. So this is intercession. Shafara. Now the rule is, Man yashfa shafaratan hasanatan yakun lahum naseebum minha. Now these two ayat, please note, if we take them generally, they are the social etiquettes of a Muslim society. But if you put them in context, the discussion about munafiqeen is coming. Then you know, in the context, these are the meanings which I am explaining. Otherwise, they are just etiquettes. In human society, there is always, you recommend somebody. You make some intercession somewhere. It happens. Now this intercession or recommendation can be either right or wrong. Either it is correct or it is wrong. So if you have made a correct intercession, you will get the reward of Allah. And if you have made a wrong recommendation, you will be punished for this. So this is the general etiquette. مَنْ يَشْفَى شَفَاتًا حَسَنَةً يَكُلْ لَهُ نَصِيبٌ مِنْهَا Whosoever is making a good recommendation, a good and correct intercession, he will get a portion from it. Portion of the reward. وَمَنْ يَشْفَى شَفَاتًا سَيِّيَةً And whosoever is doing this intercession but wrongly, his recommendation is based on falsehood. يَكُنْ لَهُ كِفْلٌ مِّنْهَا He will not be spared then. He will have to bear the responsibility. He will get a portion of the punishment. وَقَالَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْنْ مُقِيْتَ And verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the controller of everything. Now, as a general principle, it is a general etiquette in the Muslim society. Always see, before interceding somewhere, before making any recommendation somewhere, either you are doing it rightly or wrongly. But here in the context, it is for the munafiqin, because it's for the mixed society. One brother is munafiq, the other is a true woman. What happened, you know, to Abdullah ibn Ubay? He was the Raisul munafiqin. the chief of the munafiqin of Madina. But his son, Abdullah ibn Abdullah ibn Ubayi, he was a very true moment. So that has happened. He came to the Prophet ﷺ when Abdullah ibn Ubayi, when he died, he requested, give me your shirt, O Messenger of Allah. I want to give this shroud, this coffin, to my father. After all, he was his father. And he was his son. He knew that he is Munafiq. When the Muslim army was returning from Ghazwa to Banil Mustariq, and during that Ghazwa, you know, this, this person, Abdullah ibn Ubayi, had spoken much against the Prophet ﷺ and the Muhajireen. When they were returning, this son, you know, Abdullah ibn Abdullah, with a bare sword, he stood at the gate of Medina. And he said, to his father, I won't let you in unless you accept that you are Zaleel and Muhammad is Aziz. Because he has said, if we return to Medina, we the honorable ones, we shall, we shall turn them out, these people you know, these weaklings who had come to us as refugees, we gave them the refuge. And now they come And you know, they, they think they are equal to us. He said, you have to accept that Muhammad and his companions are Aziz. They are honorable. Not you. So 
So that was his, his demand. But at the time of death it came, give me the shirt. And the Prophet gave the shirt. And when Hazrat Umar said, what are you doing, Ya Rasulullah? To this munafiq you are giving your shirt. And the reply was, my shirt will not be able to save him from the punishment of hell. If you know, I accept the request of a bowman, what harm to me? But this is not going to save him from the divine punishment. Anyhow, من يشفى شفاة حسنة يكون له نصيب منها ومن يشفى شفاة سيئة يكون له كفل منها وكان الله على كل شيء مقيتا وإذا حييتم بتحية فحيوا بأحسن منها أو ردوها إن الله كان على كل شيء حسيبا And when you are greeted with a greeting, return it in a better form or at least the same. When somebody says to you, Assalamu alaikum, you should say Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You give him something more. Or at least return it as such. Now why? What happened with the munafiqeen? Because at the heart, they had the enmity of the Muslims, true moments. If a mumin said to him, Assalamu alaikum. Well, he would reply, you know, reluctantly, Alaikum, as if he has done his duty. But if he is a true moment, he would say, Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is again a general etiquette also, and here in the context, it actually refers to the conduct and the behavior of the munafiqs. وَإِذَا حُيِّيْتُمْ بِتَحِيَّةٍ فَحَيُّوا بِأَحْسَنَ مِنْهَا أَوْ رُدُّوهَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْنْ حَسِيبًا Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take everything in his accounting. He is the very big accountant of all the deeds and sayings of all the peoples. الله لا إله إلا هو Allah is He that there is no ilah except him. Allahu. This is Mubtada. Allahu. La ilaha illahu. This is Sabar. Allah is the one who is the only God, only Allah, only ilah, and there is no ilah besides him. La yajmannakum ila yawmin qiyamah. He will surely gather you together on the day of judgment, on the day of resurrection. لا يجمعنكم Emphasis. No escape. أين المفر؟ قال لا لا وزر إلى ربك يوم يزن المستقر. No مفر. No place to to flee or to run away. لا يجمعنكم إلى يوم القيامة لا ريب فيه. Why actually these munafiqin? They just had forgotten that a day of judgment is to come. And why do we commit sins? We just forget that we have to face that ground accountability of the day of judgment. There's no doubt about it. Look to the emphasis. Then repetition. There is no doubt about it. And who can be more truer in his saying, in his statement, than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah is telling you, Allah is saying this, who can be more true in his saying and statement? Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim. Wa nafani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa sallam. Allahu Akbar The Islamic Organization of North America, Iona, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. 
A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing Iona is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at tanzeem.us or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.